reflected, ready to start up for this top eight. This is not going to be a scenario where ties are going to come into the equation. We have to decide a winner here, and they're going to have extra time on the clock to do so. Get hyped. This is top eight of our first regionals of the season for the 2022-2023 Pokemon. And there is just a concealed cards and a pass. Not what you want to see. No item cards to get other Pokemon out. Mm -mm. Very, very slow start. And when you're up against Mew, at the very least, this one isn't known for its early aggression, but it still maintains that ability with the Battle VIP pass to get an incredibly quick setup. Once Jeremy gets all the Genesex into play, just going to keep drawing all the cards. This is a situation that he's been piloting, you know, throughout the last 48 hours, right? Just yeah. drawing tons of cards, getting this set up having access to the cross-switcher technology to just bully the opponent down when they do get this slow start. You're not worried about Meloetta, but you know Mew is also a strong attacker in its own right. I wonder if there's a way to figure out how many times these Mew players have started that Battle VIP pass turn one and <laughs> figure <laughs> out that, that percentage here. But getting that for your first turn is just so powerful, being able to just get those Pokemon for free, essentially. And once you get the Genesect off of the first battle VIP pass, if you're able to thin the down, uh, hand down even more, you're drawing more cards, it creates this beautiful turn one feedback loop where you see so much of your deck. We, and overall, when we have the Mew decks popping off, especially in the mirror match like before, um, there's a lot of shuffling, a lot of card draw, and it kind of drags the timer down. And fortunately, having this extra buffer means that when so much is on the line for this match, the players can enjoy that extra time to think about their plays. Double Turbo comes down onto the MUV. Avery just being used right now to draw some cards. Typically, you might want to save this to punish Makani for benching a lot of Pokemon as they try to set up that subspace swell attack. But just using it now to draw cards means Jeremy might be... Um, confident in the early tempo, the early advantage that he's able to generate, or potentially confident of having another Avery when they need it. Kermamatic did flip tails for Jeremy there, but does have a quick ball, discards the boss's orders for a second Genesect V. So this is starting to look like the usual turn one that you want from this Fusion Strike deck. And Really, it's all about that turn two. Can you get that Mew VMAX in play? Can you get a knockout on a V and just continue the ball rolling? Seems to be the case. The hand is very, very small for Jeremy. The Fusion Strike systems haven't been used yet. Here's the first one for three. Another battle VIP pass. That there means we go. the bench will be full on this first turn. And we saw a little glimpse of Jeremy's hand there, two Mew VMAX in the hand with a double turbo energy. So honestly, you couldn't ask for a better start. Glorious. And the setup has been completed now with Makani having such a slow start. When you're fighting from behind as a Palkia deck, it's so easy to run out of resources, to run out of ways to pivot to your next attacker. Sure, this Palkia V can evolve into a V-Star, but you need another Palkia V benched. You have to be able to get that set up. There's only one water energy in the discard pile, so the star portal isn't going to be an option to catch back up. Furthermore, once you do bench that uh, Palkia V, it just becomes a target for Cross Switcher. Exactly. And here's the second Fusion Strike system. So filling the hand yet again, and this is just an embarrassment of riches. Pokey Stop and a Cross Switcher found off those cards. And we could continue to see Jeremy dig a little bit more here, but with how slow Makani's start was, he's going and oh, trying to get me. an attack off. Makani actually not on Scoop Up Net. Oh, yeah. Huh. I, it, it's in a play that I've seen so much because of the Sobble engine in the Palkia list, but uh, this one is a little bit... Uh, oh, yeah, because it's the uh, Babarel engine. So once you have that as your draw supporter, again, not being able to use that consistently resetting ability. So maybe Makani can get set up here with a Bidoof at the very least, and then Jeremy has to ask the question, do I chase down the attacker? Do I try to snipe down support Pokemon instead? How do you really want to approach this matchup to be aggressive or play towards this new uh, Mew variant's ability to be a disruptive, annoying deck if it chooses? Irida in hand, though, for Makani, so they'll be able to search for a water Pokemon and an item, 
and it's looking like, yeah, Cross Switcher and Origin Form Palkia V-Star maybe going for a big knockout on that Mew V with that double turbo energy. We'll have to see. Taking down the double turbo energy has been a fantastic strategy versus these new Mew, de Mew decks. Only has the four double turbo energy in the deck in order to facilitate attacking. Uh, every once in a while, the, the players get really overzealous or sometimes desperate to look for a specific card, end up discarding the double turbos off of the Pokestop with Ice Rider Calyrex also hitting the bench. We have now another backup attacker. Not probably the best one in this yep. scenario, but still it is something. And right now we're probably going to see a star portal. Just get those two energies on that active. So there's an attachment to the Radiant Greninja. Very interesting. Only a couple, right? I only counted two uh, water energies in the discard pile. So that can still be accelerated onto the Palkia V-Star. Once you attach that energy to the Greninja, you just have this ticking time bomb, this extra threat of maybe finding that Moonlit Shuriken. Well, with the Cross Switcher, you're going to need to retreat. So getting ah, that third I energy see, in at the discard just maximizes your annual attachments. Two Melanie in the list for Makani, but you've got to draw into them. No Bidoof, no Barrel part of this equation yet. And with that choice right belt, that is enough to take the knockout on the Ice Rider, Calyrex V. And Cross Switcher will bring it up and put the Genesect V back to the bench. Uh, I appreciate that choice of the Ca Ice Rider Calyrex. Its damage is not going to be uh, able to be stopped, right? Yeah. The, with the bench so small for Makani, the Origin Form Palkia V-Star has already been defanged. Trekking Shoes for Jeremy. Again, Oh, Ooh, discards, discards a double turbo. We talked about how important these can be, but I guess that Jeremy feels that um, he's so far ahead in this match, about to take this knockout um, with Makani failing to complete the setup, that the double turbo isn't a requirement. You still have one in play, a few more in the deck. So feeling pretty safe here to dig a little deeper with that trekking shoes. He's still got that one in hand, and then your copy of Silene as well to maybe get those Very back true. later on if need be. But right now, getting the knockout uh, for Jeremy is the best possible thing. And then you just need to build up those power tablets to take the knockout on that Palkia V-Star. Mm -hmm. You see some players get punished by you know running out of the energies, but you can't let what happened to other players uh, spook you out of doing what you feel is the correct line. Jeremy obviously <laughs> has been correct 12 times over the course <laughs> of uh, the Swiss rounds and now is sitting very comfortably as the first seed here in top eight. Thinking through the plays, there's an ultra ball where, depending on what you discard, could be detrimental, but having the pal pad here to shuffle back in that boss's orders in Avery, not too bad, especially the later you go, the better those supporters get. And it'll be interesting to see if Jeremy actually fires off that Ultra Ball or not just to draw more cards with that last Fusion Strike system. The Avery, just uh, a fantastic way to punish, right? As soon as Makani starts to get set up, we have the Avery to say, well, you've got to discard something now. Or I think we've seen it more often than not where Avery is just draw three. Yeah, good old hop. Or Charon. <laughs> Any of the, the draw three supporters. Of your, yeah. of your choice. But Rotom Phone looks at the top five. A lot of strong options to put on top here. Yeah, Power Tablet could be a card of choice for the next turn. Uh, you are also a little bit worried that Makani is going to have that Melanie Water Energy to take the knockout with some bench Pokemon. Uh, but you really just have to play to what you need to do to get this victory. Mm -hmm. And we saw Jeremy kind of put on the brakes a little bit earlier in the game, and now we can already see him shifting gears to solidify the position here. The Rotom Phone just putting the card on top. The, the Fusion Strike systems have all been expended for this turn, and the hand looks great. Going to take the open attack here, the uh, Techno Blast, to get that knockout. Two prizes from the Calyrex going down. Palkia V-Star gets promoted to the active, Nice Irida off the top, but now we've got another bench of Luminion V using its Luminous Sign ability to search through the deck for a supporter card. And what do you think Makani needs off of this Luminion? Well, you need to attack. 
So <laughs> they're going to get that Melanie mm -hmm. and be able to get an energy on that Origin Form Palky of V-Star, attach for turn, and then hopefully take the knockout. Uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of math. Uh, I really don't want to do it right now, but we'll see. Uh, I'll trust them. Once you have the Melanie in play, not only are you attaching the ener energy, you're drawing some cards. And yeah, it's already being eyeballed here. Trying to just keep up at this point, with especially with the Star Portal offline, this Origin Form Palkia needs to take a knockout, get some prizes, buy enough time for the next attacker to be established. We want to hopefully see another Palkia V put onto the bench and get ready to evolve. Uh, Jeremy did, again, put that Avery back in. So the bench, if it is forced to get really wide on this turn, you're going to have to scramble, perhaps, in a future turn to get even more Pokemon to bench to power up the subspace swell. Trekking Shoes and Ultra Ball drawn off that Melanie are two pretty good item cards for Makani here. Just needing more Pokemon in play. Uh, it does have concealed cards, so continue the digging. But no basic Pokemon so far. Oh, no. It's so difficult to get the knockouts from this position, even though Jeremy has a full bench. You know, it's only your, it's both benches combined to power up the subspace swell, but you've also got to do your part here to come together to find this line. And look at this, having to discard the Bibarel just to find another basic. Makani still needs to make sure that they have a water energy in hand to attach to that active. Remember, the Melanie just got the one from the discards. Still has the attachment for turn. Ultra Ball most likely going to find a B-Doof, I guess. You do have access to something like maybe a Crobat. Yeah, the list is no. got a very big toolbox. There's like Empor oh, pulling on V in there. But it's such a struggle, especially not seeing the Bidoofs, not seeing the Palkias. And when you're trying to just scrape the bottom of the barrel just to put up some sort of offense, you're being forced to bench all of these Pokemon that are just prime targets for Jeremy to chase down with the cross switchers and with boss's orders with already two prize cards out of six taken. If Makani cannot respond on this turn, you're going to fall irreparably behind. And if my math was right, which it usually never is, but... Uh, <laughs> I do believe Makani needs a full bench to deal that 260. Uh, there is that choice belt, so I guess that is a little bit of a leeway here. Yeah, there's still a little bit of damage on this uh, Mew VMAX from earlier, that Moonlit Shuriken. Makani was already playing towards uh, you know this sort of position to have a slightly easier time to get the knockout on the VMAX, but without the proper setups of the Bidoof, or another attacker just set up a little bit sooner, um, it has become very difficult to keep resources in hand versus having to discard key pieces through the Ultra Ball. Well, there is that fourth bench Pokemon and that choice belt that is enough to take the knockout through the Oracorio. And finally, Makani getting those three prizes now up, essentially. Uh, but Jeremy still has the advantage in turns, at least. But that 70 damage on that Mew V could prove very beneficial for Makani. Mm -hmm. And now there is the attachment onto the Mew V, the double turbo, and the evolution. So we've got another attack coming off of this fresh one. Power tablet. Another power Ooh. tablet already is assembling the pieces to knock out this Palkia V star. Here comes the Pokestop. We need to find a choice belt here. And there was the choice belt found. Three cards drawn for that Pokestop. You love to see it. All the pieces coming together for Jeremy. Every Mew deck comes down to these sorts of combos, right? Having the choice belts and the power tablets. It's been so long where power, power tablets was just something you could burn for free to facilitate Fusion Strike system. But now this deck truly needs them to hit the attacking numbers that it requires. Pretty interesting to see the cross switcher there. But pulls up that Luminion V. It's going to be an easy knockout, but you're losing the benefit of those power tablets. Yeah, it might just go for a retreat back into the Mu V Max. Jeremy coming up just a little bit short on the math, perhaps. Wants to get an easier KO to chase up something else for the knockout. Again, this Calyrex V, also a nice target. That was the first source of Jeremy's prize cards. I guess we are digging for one more power tablet. You can copy that Psychic Leap 
attack and shuffle back in that Mew VMAX, so there's no way for Makani to take the game next turn. So this is going to be a big Kramomatic Heads. Kramomatic Heads. This is going to find that final power tablet. But then you run the risk of if Makani is able to take out your Mew V, then you're just going to be so far behind. Yeah, when the Mew, Mew V goes down, it's just the, the Lumineon V is already an easy knockout. The map that Jeremy wants to go for is fine, but you're leaving this Origin Form Palkia V Star set up. And I think this just goes back to Jeremy playing this in a much more methodical and cautious yeah. manner, uh, not wanting to take the risk of going all in towards taking down the Palkia and coming up short and then just leaving this attacker in the active. Do you think Luminion V might uh, be left stranded here while Jeremy kind of re, you know, recouples and redoubles his resources here, builds up for a better attacking position? But then you're just missing out on the power tablets. Yeah, uh, dealing 190 with Psychic Leap will be able to take the knockout. And maybe Jeremy's just focusing in on that Echoing Horn to finish off the game, bring back the Luminion V, take the knockout with the boss's orders. And it's just going to be really risky leaving that Mew V in play by itself and that Origin Form Palkia V Star with two energy. Mm -hmm. When you go for the Psychic Leap, the Mew V is just going to shuffle itself and all of its attached cards back into the decks. So you aren't missing out on the double turbo energy. Um, but then you have to find something to promote. You're leaving this damage Mew V Max in play that Makani maybe can still chase down. And that's why you can see Jeremy uh, being so diligent, checking the discard pile, seeing what is the risk of this play actually happening. And we still oh. a little bit of a discussion going on at the table with the Mew deck. There's a lot of sequencing, a lot of cards drawn. Sometimes things can get quite mixed up, just making sure that everything has happened the way it needs to. Again, the table judges are trying to work through it here. But the way this turn has been set up, Jeremy would hopefully get that Mew Max out of harm's way back into the deck. And just got to pray that Makani doesn't have that boss's orders. Yeah, hmm, it looks yeah, like... this is my third turn, actually, I'm certain. Because he went first. Yeah. He Palkia, Greninja, attached, pass. I want second, attack yeah, so there is a little bit of discussion at the table. Um, they're just retracing okay. the steps here of the turn, turn to make absolutely sure that everything turn. has gone according to, um, you know, proper rules, proper gameplay. I certainly didn't notice any direct errors. I know there's probably some eagle-eyed viewer that maybe spotted something, whatever the judges are discussing at this point. But they'll get it resolved as well. And, of course, there'll be a time extension to make up for this little, uh, you know, lapsing gameplay. I think uh, Makani's trying to figure out if uh, there already was an attachment for the turn or if uh, there was a double attachment. But mm. I do believe that the double turbo energies have been in there. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Jeremy already had it in hand, got the attachment turn one, attachment turn two, discarded the one with the trekking shoes, I believe. Okay. And then with that... Uh, we have the board state where it is now, but the players are still trying to figure it out there. Yeah, it's very difficult. Like as you, I think it's it's honestly happened a lot on the stream where Mew, especially this new build, that's not just going for turbo and a very direct attacking uh, style, going for something that wants to be more methodical, a little bit more disruptive. There's a little bit more in that sequence that you have to keep track of, and you know sometimes you know two supporters, a double attachment. Uh, depending on how the turn is passing back and forth. But here in top eight, we can see we have two judges at the table, and it uh, looks like they are going to make absolutely sure that everything is going, you know, properly at this point. Still 50 minutes left in the round, left on the clock. And when we evaluate the board state as it is, you know, uh, Jeremy was already gearing up for a fantastic turn with uh, Makani being in a position of still at least having the origin form Palkia V-Star available as attacker, but the downside of Luminion V and uh, Ice Rider being in the discard pile to just be brought back with Echoing Horn to be those final two knockouts. Yeah, this is how 
the the Palkia versus Mew matchup plays a lot in general is the player who gets to take that first knockout really just sets the pace of play for the game. You're going to take those two prizes, then you're going to get two prizes taken, then you're going to take two prizes, then they're going to take two prizes, then you're going to win the game. Mm -hmm. That's hopefully how it draws out the way Makani has played this game. They chose to do the Moonlight Shuriken, get the 70 damage on both Mew V, and then that way you can soften them up with the VMAX and take the knockout a little easier. Yeah, going for that two, three po prize Pokemon prize mapping is very bold. Uh, this list with the Mew VMAX, um, because you aren't being so uh, specific about Fusion Strike energy, being able to attach your double turbo to get the retreat on a Genesect, you know, like classic Mew, you strand that Genesect to buy yourself some time. Uh, you, you have more play and more flexibility there with the attacks that you decide to use. And it's just having access to these extra options adds another layer of complexity to the game. And here in top eight, these players are still very well oiled, I would say, at this point. You know, you've put your reps in. They had that nice break before the end of the final Swiss rounds, before top eight began to really recenter themselves. And at this point, it's just an abundance of caution from the judges to uh, just make sure that there's not a double attachment here because it would mean that this Mu V in the active will not have the double turbo energy on it, correct? Yeah. Uh, but it would mean a little bit more because there's some cards drawn with Fusion Strike system. There's mm. cards being found. So uh, we'll just wait and have to see how things shape up here. Uh, this is top eight, though, so there's 75 minutes mm -hmm. uh, plus whatever time extension will come yeah. from this. And you got to remember, even though you got that little 20 minute break or so, this is still top eight. You've been playing all weekend. Nerves are going off. Both of these players, it's their first top eight out of regionals. And so, no, while you can't excuse mistakes like that, it, it's definitely something that could happen. Yeah, it definitely happens to the best of us and the worst of us, of course. Uh, but that's why we have the judges here. We have two at the table. And, you know, we have the wonderful <laughs> modern technology of actually being able to check the tapes uh, and just make sure that it all went down. And that there's going to be a lot of sequences and a lot of actions to, to sift through when you have to actually see the sequence leading up to this board state against a Mew deck. Um, they, again, drawing so many cards, playing so many cards, discarding so many cards with the Kramomatic. And I know that us on the desk, everyone at home, and the players are just praying that this is a salvageable board state if something did indeed go amiss. It's looking like the they have settled it, it seems like. All right, so a third judge arriving to confer. The council has spoken. We're going to try to repair this state. So it does look like there was... So there is a bit of a rollback happening indeed. Yeah. And now it's just a matter of if it is possible. Um, maybe there can be some sort of hand randomization from the judges and things shuffled back in. Um, fortunately, with the footage we have available, we can see what was drawn. It's just a matter of you know player information at this point. Um, maybe there will be some sort of call. But again, this is there are it's all written down in the book, and then some things are always going to land outside of what you anticipate, and the judges will make the best ruling uh, based on their discretion, of course. Well, while we have this time, we can update you on a few of the other top eight matches that have been going on. Piper yeah, Lapine up one game against Jack Moore. That's going to be that Inteleon Radiant Charizard up against that Mill Tank kind of toolbox stall hoping, yeah, hoping the for the best. But thing. It is a very rough matchup for Jack there. And then meanwhile, Andrew Kennett up one game against Dro Rudiger with that Reggie Gigas. Wow, the Reggie gig is still hanging in there. A list that a lot of players brought, but only one made it this far. Drew has been piloting it very well, and we even saw in the match of Drew versus Piper, Piper didn't feel that she was actually favored in that match. It ended up going her way, um, and that was due to you know, some early scoops and some bad prizes, but 
when it comes to those two maybe rematching, that would be certainly interesting to see. Oh, for sure. And the way it looks like it, they're both one game away from doing that. All right. And as we kind of zoom back in on this gameplay, um, it looks like one of these cards here is going to be exiled, uh, <laughs> figuring out how to roll back this game state. And this is honestly the, the judges going above and beyond, right, to repair this game state, especially with a deck that can perform so many sequences so rapidly to figure out what cards we can perhaps shuffle back into the deck, etc. whatever they choose to do. Um, the, the players are certainly going to abide by that. That's why the judges are here. And I think that we don't really see any um, remarks or gestures of protestation from these players. They're perfectly fine with going along with whatever the judges say, I think, at this point. Yeah, it seems like they are going to be able to rewind uh, the actions to where that double turbo energy was put back into the hand. Yeah, we're, um, we're putting Dialga in. <laughs> Dialga is using its uh, time space uh, powers to get the, the time wound back. And uh, yeah, it's most likely going to be at least a double prize penalty for mm. Jeremy. Anytime you draw an extra card, it's flat out at least a pr double prize penalty. That's definitely going to affect the way this game is just because that means Makani would only need, what, one more prize to take the game here? True. That is true after getting that first knockout. And with this, you can see how, when you are an up-and-coming player, you've made it to your top first top eight at a regional, you're very excited to jump into it, and you think, okay, well, I'm just going to do what I've been doing the entire time, and you lose focus for one second. You, um, you fall into you know an autopilot almost, and there's just a small slip up here, and it takes a bit to repair, but the, but the judges have done their diligence, and we'll, we'll, we'll get word on the official ruling, of course. I personally am just excited to see this game continue because it is rather close, especially considering the way Makani approached this in a somewhat unorthodox fashion with that opening Moonlit Shuriken attack to set up um, a later game advantage. Yeah, so it seems like Jeremy actually just didn't have the attachment turn one, and that's where I got kind of confused. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, so that card in hand, um, still able to have that third power tablet with that Kramomatic and just put back a card, and it is most likely going to be that double prize penalty. We'll get official word. Yep, there we go. The red Pokeballs mm -hmm. means that Makani just needs one more prize to finish up this game of one here. So now the texture of this matchup has really shifted. Jeremy seemed to be in a strong state to be able to take another prize, maybe uh, nullify one of Makani's attackers. But now when you only need a plan to take one more prize, this Oracorio becomes a huge liability on the bench. Yeah, that, that means the whole cross switcher play to bring up the Luminion V is just the worst possible thing that could have happened now because you wanted to take that knockout on that origin form Palkia V-Star, force Makani to have another Melanie and try to take a knockout with that Ice Rider VMAX. And with that ruling too, there is going to be a 15 minute time extension. Cross fusion strike. All right, and now Jeremy is re-promoting this Mew VMAX, going for the cross fusion strike here using the Techno Blast. Yeah, and Ops not to put it into the deck because this Mew VMAX is the only thing that can actually take a hit from the origin form Palkia V-Star. Just 10 damage off from taking, or I guess uh, 30 damage off from taking the knockout. Needs oh, yeah, a couple more bench Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And now we have we have an attacker. Makani just ha it's got the choice belt, two water energy attached. Just have to uh, get a few more Pokemon on the bench to make this happen. And again, that bonus damage from earlier from the Moonlit Shuriken means this Mew VMAX is going to be an easy knockout. And Makani just clarifying, yep, four bench for the knockout. And with that Irida and the Bidoof in hand, it looks like that will be the game one here. Yep, Palkia V and the Quick Ball, so that's going to be the other benched Pokemon to take this one down. 
So due to a small gameplay error, Makani is indeed able to recover this. Jeremy was going for a line of, again, just getting the easy knockout on the Luminion V, setting up the Echoing Horn to get another knockout versus this. But with the Origin Form Palkia of V-Star remaining in play as an attacker, game one oh, is no, going to go gonna down. I was going to leave yeah. to an order. Uh, a lackluster way to finish that game, one, but Makani just sticking to their guns, able to pull it off, catching the double attachment first, mm. and then being able to just use the board to their advantage, pulling away with the victory for that first game. Jeremy still was kind of in a little bit of trouble there, was going to psychic leap the Mew VMAX into the deck, bring up that Oracorio. Then it was on Makani to try and find a boss's orders or something like a cross switcher to actually take the knockout on the Mew on the bench. And if yeah. that happens, there's no way for Jeremy to win anyway. Mm -hmm. So either way, Makani was sort of in a strong position. Again, with the origin form Palkia V Star, I was definitely very worried that there wouldn't be enough ta uh, attacking Pokemon coming from the Palkia side. But. At the end of the day, once we get into the next game, and potentially a game three, Mew still has so many chances to just run away with the game with the Battle VIP Pass. You're going to get set up so quickly. And once you get the Fusion Strike systems online with the Genesec V, you just continue to draw. And now Jeremy is not going to make a mistake like this again. Oh, you, you can guarantee that. Uh... You once once something like that happens, it, it, it racks your brain for a while. Uh, and Jeremy's still not out of it yet. It is a matchup that is pretty back and forth, but the fact that Jeremy has been dominating this entire tournament weekend, you mm -hmm. have to at least have some confidence in this matchup. Yeah, he was feeling very confident during his interview. He likes all the matchups, almost all of them that are present in the top eight, and it just comes down to execution. We know that the players, especially towards the end of the Swiss rounds, were getting very exhausted from having to grind through these games. It was a higher stakes Swiss rounds than usual because everyone was so, so cracked. Right, having to get 36 points to, to get your guaranteed spot, 35, 36 points, is just ridiculous, I think. Yeah. Uh, Echoing Horn in the middle of the prizes for Jeremy could be something that comes up later on. That is one of the easier ways for you to work around the V Stars and the V Maxes and just get those easy two prize knockouts in those Pokemon V. Mm -hmm. Once you. Usually when you have the Echoing Horn play, you're planning for it when you have four prizes remaining. And we'll see once Jeremy looks through the deck and sees that the Echoing Horn is in the prizes, if he'll take that big bet. After taking the first two off of a V, a v or V-Star KO, you know, do you take that bet? Well, my next two will be Echoing Horn and just play towards that out. Or will it be too risky? We've seen Jeremy kind of opt to approach these matchups in a much more cautious fashion. One of the two origin form Palkia V Star in the prizes for Makani here. But Jeremy starts off this game two of our top eight with another Battle VIP pass. Yeah, you love to go first with this list, of course. Battle VIP pass right off the top. Going to complete the setup. We've seen this time and time again. Genesect V going to be found. Jeremy, of course, taking this opportunity to evaluate the prize situation. Nothing too scary in there. Uh, meanwhile, Makani is feeling much more relaxed at figuring that win in game one. You have a buffer now. Take the game two, or if it goes to game three, you know, especially with this time extension, you're going to have plenty of time to still make sure you're thinking. No need to go for, like, any wild turbo plays. Tails on the Cram-O-Matic, however. Tails is never what you want to see, but it's still early, you know. Turn one, mm -hmm. it's fine. Yeah, it's definitely better to have it happen early than later in the game when you need that heads to find that one missing piece, that final power tablet, or that cross switcher that you need to take the final KO or bail yourself out of a bad situation. Especially when you're completing your setup, it's just a very easy way to thin down the hand. And, you know, Rotom Phone is available, but we need a few more Pokemon to bench uh, in order for these Fusion Strike systems to really come alive. Yeah, you're going to have to work around... Thin down the hand mm, a little two bit. Genesex being revealed from the Rotom phone. So Jeremy has a bit of a interesting line once again where you can play it slow, put the Genesect on top, just relax for a turn. 
Well, you got that Pokestop in hand, so that's a way to thin the hand down without shuffling the deck. Mm -hmm. And with that, draw the one card, which is that Genesect. Then you just continue on with that Fusion Strike system. All right, Pokestop will be set up. This, honestly, this stadium has added so much weird textures to the, li to the lineups and the matchups where decks that normally wouldn't uh, you know, even be running the stadium can still make use of it, a bit like training court. And then you have to take that big risk of, oh, but what if I discard something important? But with this Mew deck, of course, you're drawing so many cards that maybe you just don't care if you discard something important from time to time. Ultra Ball was the card found from the Rotom phone, though. So it's still a Genesect, just in an awkward way. Discards that double turbo energy. The extra one from the hand, and now Genesect's full power almost, drawing up the four cards. There's another battle VIP pass. Doesn't mind discarding the double turbo because there is one attached. Final va battle VIP pass to complete the setup. And now all we need is the Oracorio, and that is indeed found. Looking like a pretty good start here for Jeremy, but again, we said that last time. <laughs> uh, it's going to be up to Makani, see how their start is going to be for this game one of this game, or turn one of this game two. Was this one used, or did no, I kill this? Yeah, double checking the Genesect to make sure if it's been used or not. Um, there is one more Fusion Strike system available. And again, Jeremy just triple checking, like, I haven't used this one, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we saw earlier, you know, players even turning their Genesect Vs upside down to indicate that they've been used. And, uh, or players putting the used Genesects way off to the side to <laughs> yeah. directly indicate because you are kind of weaving them in with your turn. So sometimes it is hard to remember all of it. But back over to Makani, gets the quick ball here. Discarding a water energy you love to see. And from here, you have to say, okay, do I want to find Radiant Greninja, draw more cards? Do I want to get an attacker with Origin Form Palkia V? Um, a very split path being offered here. And we saw Makani kind of, again, take a line that we weren't really anticipating with that early Moonlit Shuriken. And we'll see if they want to replicate that same sort of game state. It's going to be interesting for sure. Looking like maybe the Luminion V could be the Pokemon of choice for Makani that would open up a play for Irida, mm -hmm. getting that Battle VIP pass maybe. And from there, you get fully set up. This quick ball turns into four Pokemon. Yeah, already pulling those cards to the top here. Going to get the Luminion and go back in for the Irida and Battle VIP pass. A much stronger setup for Makani here to get those Bidoofs as well, get the Babarel engine online, get some more card draw, have more resources to respond to this Mew setup. Jeremy has consistently demonstrated this exact distribution of Pokemon on the bench every single game. It's looking like that Origin Form Palkia V is going to be the Pokemon that Makani yeah. chooses, and then that Battle VIP pass grabs that Bidoof like you were saying. You want to get that B-Barrel engine up as fast as possible. That's really the one way Makani can get through their deck. Uh, you can utilize your Ultra Balls drawn later on in the game to grab your V-Stars and V-Maxes, and then just draw back up to five cards. Both players, yeah, just demonstrating these loops of thinning the hand down and having to be very specific about the way they use the resources. Uh, because once you've discarded something or maybe burned something, you know, failed a quick ball just to get it out of your hand and discard something, it's gone. Now, look at this full setup here for going the Radiant Greninja, but getting a lot of attacking Pokemon in play, plenty of things to pivot to. It's going to be difficult for Jeremy to chase down the proper target while also feeling safe. If two Mew VMAX go down, Makani will take this second game. Missing the energy attachment for the turn, though. Makani does have that Melanie in hand to go along with the training court, but you don't want a training court bring back the energy to attach because then you can't use your Melanie for next turn. Mm. So yeah, leaving the en water energy in the discard pile, super important to still continue to plan ahead. We can see Makani also has that Raihan in hand. Another way to attach from the discard pile. So strong, again, using the Melanie, the Raihan, and the Star Portal all in combination to make sure that you're able to quickly set up another attacker, especially when you're behind. You need that catch-up potential. 
This is kind of an awkward Avery and here. Avery. Because Makani's going to discard that Lumini on V 100% of the time. And yet, yeah, now just getting rid of the Ice Rider, focusing on that origin form Palkia V for the bulk majority of this game. Yeah, the Palkia V sometimes can be a little clunky to hit the numbers that you need, but because Jeremy is playing a deck that has no choice but to fill up its bench almost, um, you can reliably count on this extra damage for the subspace as well. Meanwhile, Jeremy with the trekking shoes finds the Kramomatic and pulls a heads. That heads is huge. That means Cross Switcher is going to be an out for Jeremy. He'll be able to retreat. Cross Switcher, bring up that Palkia V and then take the knockout thanks to that choice belt. And this is exactly where you want to be in this match. After so many attackers were set up, the Avery and Cross Switcher play somehow allows Jeremy to nullify so much of Makani's threat potential. It went from a full bench to now just two Pokemon on the bench. Yep, and there it is. Mew V comes up and then retreats back into the Mew V Max. Can now use its cross fusion strike once, of course, these Genesects are also exp expended. Yeah, able to do all that without really using fusion strike system. That is. Pretty good, if you ask me. Yep, Mew VMAX also found here. A few more ways to thin down the, the hand with a quick ball. Nice choice belt available as well. Going to get rid of the second Pokestop. Look through the deck, fail his quick ball. Yep, just going to quickly shuffle here. I believe still has the option for Pokestop, or did he already use it earlier on in the turn? Actually, I don't think he. I don't think the Pokestop has been used this turn. Let me double check. Let me think. Let me <laughs> roll it back in my mind. Let's but look in this the is, mind palace. But this, of course, this is exactly the sort of situation that the players are faced with, right? Wait, did I use Pokestop? You've got to stop and ask the judges. Jeremy's going to be playing double cautious here. Uh, the Pokestop, I believe, was found right to get the Kramomatic or the Trekking Shoes. It might have been for the Trekking Shoes, yeah. So at the very least, I, at this point, I don't even know if Jeremy would go for it. If I ever <laughs> forgot, I'd be like, I'm not even going to try for the Pokestop. Are you guys yeah, sure if I... <laughs> yeah, okay. Jeremy is making full use of the judges here, uh, using their eyes to make sure that his turns are absolutely immaculate. And with that second energy attachment, there is the cross fusion strike for the Technoblast, taking the knockout. And this has been a pretty rough... Seven. Turn two for Makani here. All right, Mysterious Tail, though. Mew still in the active. Look at the top six. Find an item card. Trekking Shoes can see a little bit more of the deck. There's Cross Switchers in the hand. There's a Raihan available. We can try to get this uh, Palkia V set up, but we need the V Star. Does have access to an Ultra Ball, but Ultra Ball is most likely going to find something like that V Barrel if you. Mm. really need it. Uh, you can grab the the V-Star with that same Ultra Ball, but then you're just really on the back foot. No B-Barrel in play. You have no real engine to speak of. And that presents a really interesting split idea of do I want to take a slightly less guaranteed play but is more rewarding from an efficiency standpoint. Trekking Shoes does find a quick ball, however... Gets rid of the water energy, slowly just putting everything into the discard pile, setting up for Star Portal to come swinging back in. Still a lot of work needs to be done to get this Mew VMAX up. Finally, Radiant Greninja hits the scene, so a little bit more draw power available. And who knows if Makani will go for that Moonlit Shuriken attack. Now that there's two Mew VMAX in play and try to pave the way for Palkia V to kind of come back into things. Still with the Raihan in hand, you have plenty of ways to get your next attacker powered up with that ability once Mew and or Radiant Greninja goes down. Training Court finally hits the board and it's just such a great combo with this Radiant Greninja being able to pick up a water energy from your discard and then discarding it for that concealed cards. And now with a little bit of extra cards to play with, uh, Going to discard that Choice Belt, which is quite unfortunate mm -hmm. with that Ultra Ball. But now we'll be able to find what's looking like that Origin Form Palkia V-Star. And with Makani choosing the V-Star over the Bibarel, again, just going for a guaranteed attacker, not saying, well, I'm going to get the Bibarel and then try to just naturally draw into it after thinning the hand down. 
having the attackers available is how Makani is going to win. Also still has Raihan available for this turn for an attachment from the discard pile. Goes on to the Radiant Greninja. This might actually be the line, Jeremy, setting up a Moonlit Shuriken threat for the Val Palkia V-Star to capitalize on. Exactly, and Raihan able to find that B-Barrel, so best of both worlds. Not too bad for Makani here. We'll be able to draw up to five cards, especially with both those cross switchers being used right now. Brings up that Genesect, and is we're going to see that same play again. Try to strand the Genesect in the active spot and get Ooh, some and spread damage. And has the Bibarel already. Beautiful sequence. You get to have your cake and eat it too. Gets the attacker and the draw engine online. Draws into a trekking shoes to see more of the deck. Doesn't need that pump kaboo. Draws into canceling Cologne, a very hilarious tech card. Gets rid of the water energy, draws into Crobat V. So now we're able to fill up the bench as well to facilitate this Palkia V Star, get a little bit more card draw if absolutely necessary. Tool Scrapper comes through to get rid of the choice belt, making it that much harder for a revenge knockout. Not going to matter too, too much. Jeremy does have that second copy of Choice Belt in hand, but Tool Scrapper is one of those cards that isn't really seeing a lot of play, but it really does benefit a lot of these players, especially later on in this tournament. Mm -hmm. And there is the attachment with the Star Portal. Moonlight Shuriken comes through to drop that damage onto the Mew VMAX, just like we saw in the first game, and we already experienced how detrimental this is to Jeremy to be able to safely respond to Makani's onslaught. Kramomatic discarding the battle VIP pass and gets oh. ahead. Jeremy is still not out of this game, is going to fight back with all of his strength. And one card of his choosing from the deck is going to be exactly what he needs to punish. Yeah, that last cross switcher from the deck, thanks to that Kramomatic heads and with to go along with the one in hand. That means that Genesex is no longer stranded in that active spot. Uh, Mew VMAX will be able to take a knockout on something. Just depends if Jeremy has the damage modifiers to take down that origin form Palkia or maybe something like that B-Burl is going to be targeted down. Mm -hmm. There's a power tablet in the hand. We've got the choice oh, okay. belt. Still have fusion strike systems available. So here it is. And Makani, again, used the Star Portal and the Raihan already is going to need the, uh, you know, the Bibberal to find the Melanie to start getting that, that reattachment from the discard pile to get the next attacker available. So here it is, Choice Belt plus Power Tablet. Fusion Strike System to draw three cards. Just needs one more Power Tablet right off the top. So it's all come together for the knockout to come through on this origin form Palkia V-Star. Also getting rid of the training court, restricting Makani's energy options. Yeah, uh, there is no real way for Makani to try and okay. mount a comeback Trust here. With the Raihan already gone, you're not able to charge up that Greninja in one turn again. And any V that you bench, Jeremy's okay. just going to yeah eat that up and... Makani, sensing that, takes the quick scoop here and plenty of time for this game three. We need Makani to get a, a stronger start startup. I think that, that that was what we wanted to see, right? You had multiple attackers in play, everything was ready to go, but that devastating Avery cross switcher play took so many options off of the table. And now we're going into game number three. Jeremy didn't seem too disappointed on that uh, game loss uh, in the first game due to that double prize penalty and is still feeling pretty confident that I can take both of these games back to back, especially with the time extension, the natural extension of this round in top eight. Both players now have plenty of time to think about how they want to approach this. And Makani... Um, has one more opportunity. I don't know if they'll continue to go for that Moonlight Shuriken set up play or if it's going to be a much more direct attacking idea, perhaps with Ice Rider, Calyrex, VMAX, which we haven't seen uh, hit the stage yet. Definitely the big thing for this game three is the fact that Makani gets to choose if they want to go first or not. And in this matchup, Going first against a Mew deck, especially one that isn't playing Fusion Strike Energy and Meloetta, you're going to have basically an extra free turn. So as long as you get your setup, you'll be in a very good position to control the flow of that game. If that is indeed the case.
uh, Makani might be in the best position yet. And we already saw in game two, Jeremy is being incredibly cautious with the lines, consulting with the judges to make absolutely sure, did I use this Genesect? Did I use Pokestop already? And so there is no chance of a mistake here in this third game. It's going to be played all above board, no penalties assigned, and both players are gonna be swinging for the fences. Remember, this is game three, top eight, loser, their tournament is done. Winner gets to go on to top four to play against either Nicholas Moffat or Isaac, and that's gonna be a pretty, pretty good match either way. And while we are waiting for the, these players to shuffle up and prepare for their momentous game number three, we do have a bit of an update. Drew Kennett actually able to win 2-0 over Joe Rudiger. And Nicholas Moffitt's actually one up over Isaac. Yeah, and Piper wins 2-0 over Jack. So we already have our rematch set for top eight, Piper versus Drew. That's gonna be pretty insane. Piper versus Drew, that Charizard Intellion box versus the Reggies. Um, and Piper, again, did not really show a lot of confidence in being able to win that matchup. Was hoping for perhaps a tie when they initially butted heads. But when you shuffle the cards and go again, it could go either way. And that is also the name of the game for the matchup at hand. Shuffle those cards, go again, third time's the charm. Jeremy has seemed incredibly uh, favored in all of the games that we've seen so far. Makani is the one that's trying to fight from behind. But this Palkia deck with the Bidoof setup, um, just not having the ability to find those key cards with the traditional Inteleon engine means that you are sacrificing that level of direct uh, searchability to have some resilience, right? Against like, you know, memory capsule stuff and all those other things that really bully out the Sobel lines. Yeah, it is definitely gonna be something to see, but one uh, benefit is when your opponent Morgans a few times, you get a few extra cards. So mm -hmm. you're not able to search out during the game with uh, Drizziles and Inteleon, but you can at least start the game with a few extra cards thanks to your pulling Mulligans. And I think there might be, okay, no third Mulligan. We get, finally get an active start here. A couple extra cards to start for Makani. And after these power tablets go down into the prizes, we're off into game three. The power tablets being in the prizes makes it very difficult for a Palkia V-Star to go down. It's gonna force Jeremy to dig really, really deep. Meanwhile, for Makani, Ice Rider, Calyrex V starting off in the active, and now Quick Ball to find the rest of the setup. Yeah, unfortunate to find that Radiant Greninja in the prizes for Makani. Uh, and I believe you have the one boss's orders as well. So only having to rely on those cross switchers for this early game to bring up some Pokemon, take a knockout. And thankfully, starts off with a Quick Ball. We'll be able to find some more setup Pokemon, get a good turn two going. E even if you don't have the Radiant Greninja, like we saw, Makani has access to the Lumineon V or a Bidoof to, to make this explosive turn one come together. But when you're going first, of course, no supporters, so that Irida play is offline. Actually, it's going to go for Mew. We know that Mysterious Tales also very important. Searching through the top six cards of your deck could find that battle VIP pass. Definitely going to need it. And a way to get the Mew in the active spot as well. <laughs> One There's copy of Battle VIP yeah. Pass to rule them all. Let's go. I mean, you can Irida for it. So as long as you go second, you get it most of the time. Here is the switch, though. Gets the Mew in the active spot. One. Is Connie lucky enough? Let's go. No, OK. Oh, nothing. Another Their Irida is there, though. We can't grab the Irida, only grab yeah, items. The Irida's there, it's gonna get shuffled back in. So again, whiffing on that chance. Quick ball, searching through, finds the origin for Palkia. It seems like Makani has been offered these really awkward situations where you want to get a certain board set up. You want to focus on certain Pokemon being properly set up ahead of time, but has been forced to adapt on the fly constantly to get attackers in play, to, to maintain threat potential. And now in game number three, this is probably you know the most uh, cobbled together plan yet with no Radiant Greninja, uh, no ability to get the battle VIP pass turn one. 
just a couple attackers and a Bidoof against the world. Jeremy, as well, has yet to fail on completing his turn one setup with this Mew deck. Goes for the Avery just to draw three cards. Did it come together? Do you see a quick ball to go along with that Mew V? But it's going to be a little struggle of a turn. Maybe a Cramomatic Heads will be able to find that battle VIP pass. But I do like the way Makani started their turn, fetching out that Mew. You know it's actually going to stick around for a turn because with the way Jeremy has their Mew V built, uh, Mew V Max built, it's n impossible to take a, a knockout turn one. Okay. And when you have the Mysterious Tail available, that's just a couple more cards that you can see to really turn the tides of this board setup. And because there was not that overbenching, you know, the Avery didn't force any discards like we saw in game number two. And there's the Kramomatic into oh. a Tails. So Jeremy finally struggling to complete the setup after all this time. I think Jeremy uh, uh, needed the shuffle from the quick ball. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, I was anticipating going back in, so I didn't shuffle right away. I like away. the confidence. I like the <laughs> confidence, you know? Like, I'm going to flip heads on this Kramomatic, so I'm going to go back in. And Makani was like, no, you're not. But now this, uh, this hand is getting thinned down pretty severely. Rotom Phone to put a much-needed card on top. Trekking Shoes looking pretty nice. Oh, Oracorio's there as well. Four bad cards. Ultra Ball still gets things going here, I believe. Yeah, so Jeremy has to evaluate, can't, do I want to discard, you know, these cards in my hand, or can I save them for later? Jeremy has so consistently got the setup, but already demonstrated, especially in the first game, how cautious of a player he is, is willing to maybe try to take a turn off just to see what the opponent does to wait and get a, a setup. This Mew deck is based more, again, on disruption and reacting to the opponent rather than trying to brute force a game plan. There's the Genesect V for one, and it was Oracorio off of the uh, Rotom phone that was selected. Already having the Ultra Ball in hand, all right. Mm. We'll have to discard a Cross Switcher here and the Oracorio, uh, but finding that other Genesect, you, you have to do it, and it's rough, but you oh. have to. Pulls the trigger on the Ultra Ball to get the Genesect V, draw back up to four cards. We know that the Oracorio has been so important just because it forces Makani to have that extra little bit of a resource in order to hit those knockout numbers. But Jeremy, I guess, is feeling that with, you know, this Moonlight Shuriken play that we've been seeing consistently, the, the Oracorio protecting the Muse isn't really going to be that big of an issue. So now drawing cards. Another Ultra Ball for more thinning. And another Cross Switcher hits the bin for Jeremy. And having to discard two in one turn, not where you want to be, but you got to do what you got to do. Get those Fusion Strike systems in play, draw some cards, and set up for what potentially could be a pretty good turn from Akani. Mm -hmm. Jeremy being forced to make some very tough decisions around these discards here to complete the setup. I think that the last two games have shown that Jeremy, even though he wants to be a bit more cautious, needs to respect the threat potential of this Palkia deck. So wants to have a strong base, a strong way to draw more cards and respond to the aggression from a Palkia oh. V-Star and Ice V. Three Kramomatics, a Silene, and the Mew VMAX for that Rotom phone. Uh, calling and no one's answering. <laughs> <laughs> the v Mew VMAX could potentially just be the card to put on top and then you pass the turn, maybe retreat to a Genesect. Uh, not too sure, but it looks like maybe that Rotom phone could be the card, or the Kramomatic could be the card picked. Kramomatic certainly would be a big gamble. Here in the top eight, you sometimes you need to take some big risks when you know what your opponent is up to, especially in, again, this third game. Yeah. Making sure. Making double, double checking, you know, that this other, this final Genesect V hasn't been used yet. So we can draw two more cards from this position. And opting not to play that Pokestop. Oh, three cards, down. right, right. Oh, those battle VIP pass come in a little too late. They are fodder for this Kramomatic that was grabbed, and it is a Tails once more. And this hand has been... A little awkward for Jeremy here while he has drawn through a ton of cards this turn. Yeah, and Makani 
just evaluating the discard pile, seeing the trail of broken dreams that were left behind from the Ultra Balls and these Cramomatics. Adam, have you gotten a chance to look at Connie's hand? I just want to say, that's a pretty good hand. You now got we're going to get a real <laughs> game. Still oh. not done yet, though. Jeremy discards the double turbo energy, but finds trekking shoes off the Pokestop. Power tablet being offered by the trekking shoes. There are two in the prizes, so we definitely need this one. You kind of have to believe what Jeremy is going for here. Digging through all these, even you Ooh, discarding the power tablet. Doesn't want it. Finds the new V Max. And with two prize, that means one's left, and this is going to be a rough game. But Makani's hand, you got that B barrel, you got that Origin Form Palkia V Star, you got the Stadium. You even have the Canceling Clone if you want. And we're going to see a fresh five cards off this Industrious Incisors, and you already have energy in the discard for that Star Portal, and this has been. Beautiful. Yeah. Great five cards drawn. Has the capacious bucket to thin even yeah. more to find these water energies. Also has the trekking shoes available. Uh, both players really approaching this match in the same sort of style. Just drawing tons of cards, thinning through as much as you can. But Makani is the one that's forced to be aggressive. And that's the, the big stumbling block we've seen in this best of three. Where Jeremy kind of has a bit more of a luxury to sit back and wait and gather up all the pieces after things have fallen into place. Makani is sort of laying down the train tracks in front of themselves as the game is progressing, trying to capitalize on these windows of opportunity. And sometimes you're one or two cards short of truly making it happen. I have supported Trekking Shoes keeps the Palkia V. Two water in the discard for Makani here. Plays that Irida. So we'll be able to find that Ice Rider VMAX first time in this match. It's going to come out and come into play. Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX does also have the much more substantial 320 HP. Jeremy already missing out on a couple power tablets. Going to be difficult to take down once this enters the active. Going to force Jeremy to maybe get around it with the cross switchers. Still having access to Mysterious Tail is also a pretty nice benefit. And this is the power of going first in this matchup. Uh, Jeremy did everything he could to get the pool set up, get what he wants out of the deck, get a hand built to where you want it. But then Makani's just going to show up, take a knockout, hopefully take a knockout next turn, and then just needs that last knockout for the game. Yeah, the first two games Makani was opting for, again, the Moonlight Shuriken, trying to set up uh, two knockouts on a three prize Pokemon, but now with a proper offensive core, you know, now it's just Genesec V, Mew, Genesec V, very easy standard game plan here. Ice Rider being powered up, evolved, equipped with a choice belt, the air balloon onto the Mew get, uh, with the free retreat, takes down Mew V and two prizes over to Makani Tran. Ride of the High King taking the knockout, Makani is now four prizes away from making it into top four here. But if Jeremy has anything to say about that, it has to be now. The VMAX is going to be a little harder to take down. 320 HP for that bad boy. 320 HP. These are the sorts of numbers that, that decks have kind of shrunk away from being able to achieve, right? You're, you're trying to hit that 280 a lot of the time to take down the most well-known V stars. Um, we know that it is possible, you know, with the choice belt, with a bunch of power tablets, but Jeremy had already had been forced to expend a lot of those resources to discard just to complete the setup. You want to have that sort of, again, a cautious angle of being able to uh, directly respond to your opponent's aggression. So here is the first Fusion Strike system for five. Those are cards you not really want to see. Double bosses orders, cross switcher, battle VIP pass, and a double turbo energy. So a lot of gusting available for Jeremy here. 
I wonder if there is going to be some sort of desperate play <laughs> to, you know, boss up the Bibarel or something to try to buy some time because this is looking pretty nasty. If this Mew VMAX goes down, you have no choice but to promote the other one into the active, and it just makes it so difficult to properly engage with this line. If Makani takes down a Mew VMAX, that's one prize remaining, and then whatever you happen to have on the bench just becomes a delicious target. Going to bring up the Palkia V-Star, something that's much easier to get through than this Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. Most of the time. Uh, with that one power tablet being discarded already and then two in the prize cards, that means there's no real way for Jeremy to take the one-hit knockout outside of a Silene head to put a power mm. tablet back on top of the deck. Choice belt and two power tablets is that magic number, and as it stands right now, Jeremy is unable to reach that number. Has looked through the deck extensively, knows what the resources are available. Another Genesect to draw back up. We have the choice belt. Now we just have to find the final pieces of the puzzle. Have we seen Silene yet? I don't think so. Only access to one more Genesect. Hokey Stop finds a Choice Belt, a Cramomatic, an Ultra Ball. This is what you need to get the cards that you desire. So what gets discarded with the Cramomatic? We need a hedge. Jeremy's been flipping tails on all the Cramomatic so far. This game needs to come through here when all the chips are down. Goes for the Ultra Ball, trying to thin down first for this final Fusion Strike system. And with the discard of the Marnie, you, you kind of have to expect that Jeremy is going for that Silene, uh, maybe hoping just to get uh, that extra damage with those power tablets. Still needs to find that one power tablet left in the deck. We saw it on the bottom there. All right, and there is the shuffle. And then Makani is also going to shuffle. Where is this power tablet going to end up? Goes for the Cramomatic to thin down even further. Rolls off screen. Oh. And it is a heads. Oh, I'm sorry. I was playing it like I was silent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So he rolled twice because I thought they, the other dice roll was okay. like invalid. But yeah. he rolled twice as though it was a, a silent. Uh, again, this is an incredibly wow. high pressure situation for Jeremy. So. Uh, that's understandable. You can see he's already thinking about the Silene, and once you're zeroing in on a play like that, you, you start to hallucinate a bit. Well, the hallucinations came true. It wasn't a mirage. Silene was on top of the deck at least, so... Oh, it's going to be rough because there's only one power tablet in the discard. Jeremy was unable to find the other one and might have to rely on Pokestop finding two power tablets off the top of the deck, one with Silene and the other just... Do you have the time to wait one more turn? The Pokestop was already used. That's, is that double boss? No, so the cross switcher okay, brought okay. up the Origin Form Palkia. The boss will bring back that Ice Rider Calyrex okay. VMAX. Now I'm just paranoid. <laughs> And with that, it is a Techno Blast to deal some damage, but it is very scary for Jeremy here. Makani is in full position to really take control of the game. Star Portal still is available to them, and on honestly, yeah, it, it's, it's looking brutal. <laughs> yep, going to fill up the bench here. We still have a damaged Ice Rider in the active. Again, we're three prize cards, so this is an angle for Jeremy to kind of come cracking back into this game, but already the prize map is looking a bit dubious. You get this three prize knockout, then a two, then a one, but are you going to have time, especially with Makani already ahead in prizes and tempo here? Ultra Ball finds a second Bidoof. For the bench, most likely. Yeah, again, just filling up, facilitating this oh, boosted sorry. bench damage um, once this Origin Form Palkia V-Star comes back up into the active. We'll see if Makani does want to retreat this. Well, you or got if that you're just going to go orders. for the big, if you're going to go for the big shot. Double checking the discard pile. Again, a lot of precious resources already used by Jeremy. Five cards left in deck, five in hand. 
boss's order is going to bring up what looks like, yeah, that Mew V and this Ice Rider will be able to take the knockout or even a retreat to the Palkia and Star Portal will be able to take the knockout here. And yep, so there it is, Ride of the High King. Two more prizes for Makani Tran. Just one knockout away from punching their ticket into top four here. And especially with so many Pokemon on the bench, no longer is the Origin Form Palkia V um, out of the equation. The Averys were discarded long ago in order to complete the setup. So now there's no bench limiting potential from Jeremy. We've got Mew VMAX in play. We can have access to Techno Blast, but we're still relying on a couple more power tablets to finish off this Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Silene, Tails, Silene, Tails. Oh. Those cards will remain in the discard pile. No power tablets to get back. That has to be rough. Uh, was it, probably hoping to grab an Avery, maybe try to set up for next turn or something. But there's the, there's still the power tablet in the deck. Finds it here off the trekking shoes. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a next turn, Adam. Uh, knockout taken here with the cross fusion strike. Yep. Of course, smartly promoting the Mew, so you get the mysterious tail. But just has the full bench. Just needs to quickly set up for this Palkia V-Star. The Star Portal has not been used this whole time, and you can really see it's like night and day, having to use and the Star Portal oh. just to desperately hang on. There is that second cross switcher, and with that and the Star Portal ability from that Origin Form Palkia V-Star, that is going to seal it up, and Makani Tran moving up into top four here at Baltimore. Wow. And who would have thought Ice Rider is going to make a showing going in top four? So amazing. This Mew deck has put up such great numbers for Jeremy over the course of the game. But here in top eight, Palkia with the Ice Rider technology is the way to do it. We've talked about it before, Jeremy, where the Palkia decks just struggle so much to reach their numbers. And they're like, okay, well, I'll run Choice Belt. And then I'll run Leon. And I'm going to run Echoing Horn. But no, if you just have a backup attacker to build around, it just makes it a lot easier to have a, a split threat against your opponent. And a lot of players, after seeing how Worlds shaped up, they took a look at these Ice Rider lists and were like, wow, this actually has a very well-positioned part in the metagame going forward for this tournament. And Vakani is showing 